Okay, so today I have a very exciting little practice challenge for you. We're going to talk about how to instantly make the sounds you're making on cello sound more musical and, and basically just have more life in them. Okay, so I highly encourage you to try my practice challenge. Let me know how it goes. I think it's really going to help. So for those of you who may not know me, my name is Billy from adultcello.com. I'm a professional cellist here in Los Angeles and I started the cello from scratch at age 25. So that's why I've made this YouTube channel and it's dedicated to helping others like me who found the cello a little later in life. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. All right, so let's jump right in. How on earth are we gonna instantly change our sound and improve it and make it more musical, give it more life? There's two things we're gonna talk about today. The first is adding speed and weight to our bow strokes to give it more life. And the second thing is taking care of the starts and ends of notes. All right, so for today's practice challenge, I picked French folk song from Suzuki book one, picked it for a few reasons. Uh, the first reason is, you know, it's very easy in the left hand, so it's not gonna distract us from making a gorgeous sound. The other reason is that it actually is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. This plagued me when I was starting out that was kind of like my kryptonite because it it just is so naked there's not a lot going on you just have to make a really beautiful sound and this is something that plagues a lot of beginners is you know just how do i make this sound better like it's so simple but i just can't make it sound good okay the number one thing that's going to cause that is what i call and what others call dead bows so Let's just talk about what that is and then how we can start fixing it. A dead bow is kind of difficult to discern at first for people because it doesn't mean a bad sound on the cello necessarily. So like a bad sound, that, something like that where it, it, the sound didn't connect, it was very surfacey, the speed, you know, the whole thing just sounded very metallic. A dead bow is basically a tone that's lifeless in the sense that it's not you don't feel any direction whatsoever. Something like that. If you play, for example, a French folk song or a piece like that, and all the notes sound like that, where, you know, if you listen to it, the quality is not terrible, but it just, every single note is the exact same. It's like the heart monitor at the hospital, like, oh, we lost him. And it's just, bang. you know, it's just even a beautiful sound quote unquote, if, if it's played in that manner over and over again, ceases to be beautiful because you just want something to happen. Something has to happen to make it more interesting or full of life. So what we're gonna do to fix a dead bow is we're gonna start playing around with speed and weight. What I mean by that is as I pull a stroke, I want to start speeding up once I've got the note started. And it's not an arbitrary amount of speed. I'm, I'm basically, going to begin negotiations with the string I'm playing, okay? And so we're going to talk back and forth, and I'm feeling the, the kind of the tug of the string against the hair of my bow, and I'm listening for the sound, and for me, what I want is like a beautiful open ribbon of sound, and so I'm going to try to use speed to just open that sound up. So... And then with vibrato. Already, I'm more interested than... You know, there's nothing necessarily wrong, but you can see, or I hope, you can hear at least how once you start messing with the speed and weight, you, you start to get a whole contour, like there's all this texture, it starts softly and then it kind of grows and then comes back down. So we're not even talking about phrasing or any of these things, we're just talking about how we can improve the sound of individual notes. And if you string those notes together, automatically it's gonna sound better. 
even if you're not thinking about like the bigger phrase or you know bigger musical questions. So yes, it's true that talking about phrasing and you know musical theory and how a piece is constructed and where the high points are of the melody, all that's very good. It's also a little advanced. And the point here today is what can we do right now to sound more musical and to have a better sound? There's, there's plenty of other things we can do, but this is the one thing that you can instantly do to transform the sound you're making. All right, so to get started, let's just try the first note of French folk song on its own, the D natural on the A string. And what we could do first, we'll just pull a dead bow. Okay, so just nice and even, just to get a feeling for kind of what that'll sound and feel like. So I'll do it once. Okay, so not a bad sound, but not super interesting. Let's try that. Try it with me. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, now let's try adding a little bit of speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, you know, not too fast. And then as we get towards the middle of the bow, we're going to sink in with a little bit of speed to try to open the sound up. Okay, here we go. Ready? and I hope already you notice the difference in terms of interest and you know kind of musicality let's try it again okay one two three so easier said than done if you're trying it with me right now um, let's talk about what could be happening if it's not sounding exactly how it should be uh, first thing is, in terms of the speed, that's a negotiation you're having with the string. Okay, so everybody's cello is different, their body's different, the bow is different. So you're talking to your cello and you're like kind of conversing with the string and there's a tug going on. You're trying to tug on the string gently with the hair and then as you speed up, when I said sink in while you speed up, I meant that because your first finger is going to have to kind of sink in a little bit as you speed the bow up. If you don't, you run the risk of basically skidding out when you speed up. So if I don't, it, it's just way easy for the bow to, it just kind of pops out and you don't have that richness. So, okay. So that, that's kind of the biggest thing to think about with the speed. And then if I could give you a sound concept, you want an open sound. You can also get a bigger sound by just pressing harder. <laughs> but, you know, if you press to get your sound too much, you get kind of a hard, eh, eh, you know, that kind of thing versus, ah, oh, oh, you know, kind of a, just a rounder sound, which to me, that's, that's what I want to go for is a, a round, rich, open sound. Okay, so let's do that one more time with all thinking about everything I just said. <laughs> Ready, and. Okay, great. Now, let's have some fun and put two notes back together, or back to back rather. So we're gonna down bow and then up bow. Same note, D natural. Here we go. Ready, and. Okay, great. So now let's talk about the other thing I was going to mention today, which is the starts and ends of notes. That is another, I know, you know, you've heard of the 80-20 principle, like that's another one of those things you could focus on and get the most bang for your buck. What you'll hear with a lot of beginners is, you know, a kind of a more melodic, beautiful section and they start off. And so every, every bow change, every note has kind of a hard K sound when you start ka, like that. So what we want to do, the image I usually use, is petting a dog that's sleeping. So you don't want to wake the dog up and have it startled. I have a nervous dog, so I'm very aware of this. You want to just gently touch the fur, and then you can sink your hand in. It's the same with your hand and your weight into the string. So you just get... You know, just when you're starting on, and that gives you more of a like ya, ya, ma, you know, that kind of 
softer consonant when you start. That does worlds of difference, especially for bow changes, to make it smoother and more legato. So that's ka, ka, ka. Now, the minute I start changing the ka to a ma, it instantly, in my opinion at least, sounds way more musical. Okay, now, the ends of notes, essentially, we've done all this hard work to open the sound, and when we talk about resonance, that usually means ring, especially if you're playing that D natural that has, you know, strings that are gonna vibrate sympathetically. The way you end a note can either promote the ring or it can basically cut the ring off. So, as you finish a stroke, I don't wanna stop bowing all of a sudden because you just, even if you hear a little bit of ring, you hear just, it's like someone just ran out of air instantly. And I don't want to stop kind of too much on the string with too much weight because it, it just puts this kind of harsh ending. So now let's do four of those Ds and then we're gonna switch to the C natural, which is bar two. This is where, <laughs> We're going to try to really start honing in on the speed and weight while we play the notes because the D, like I said, it's very rich and resonant. It has these open strings helping along. C sharp, not as naturally resonant on the cello as our D. So we're going to try to make up for that by basically using speed and weight to kind of just emulate the thickness and richness of the tone we're getting on the D. Okay, so four D naturals, then we'll go to four C sharps. Here we go. Ready? And... All right, so how did that sound for you? Um, let's just talk a little troubleshooting and on a more technical note, one thing you can check in the mirror, if things, if you're really working hard on this and it's just not sounding like rich and resonant by the end of the stroke, there is probably a good chance that your bow, as you're you know, pulling your stroke, you're changing lanes. The number one thing that happens with most people is that they start maybe in the middle lane uh, between the bridge and the fingerboard, and then by the end of the down bow, they're kind of way up here by the fingerboard. That will instantly cut the sound um, in half. <laughs> so you really have to, for this, because we're experimenting using, you know, we're changing weight and speed, we do need a constant in this experiment, and that constant is going to be the track, the, the placement, okay? So try to hold on to the track you start on. All right, so let's go ahead, we'll finish out the phrase, we're going to work on the B natural. All right, so get your B natural first finger, and same thing, let's just pull one and see if we can get nice open sound. Okay, one more time, ready, and... Okay, great. So, B is a little more resonant, uh, depending on where you place your B. Um, it tends to be a little more resonant than the C sharp. So D is gonna be the easiest to have a ring. C sharp will be probably the toughest, and then the B, a little bit easier. And then to finish the four bars, opening French folk song, you have an open A. So let's just go ahead now. We'll play through it, and we'll just play it right as it is printed, and see if we can incorporate some of these kind of aspects we're talking about. So there you have it. There's my practice challenge for today. Um, I hope you give it a shot and I hope it really helps you. Let me know in the comments below how it goes. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thanks so much. See you next week.